Hey guys, Nate Miller here along with Paul Gibbs from Notespire Music and we are talking about songwriting. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a topic that's uh, dear to our hearts and maybe to yours as well. You know, music and, uh, and songwriting are one of the many great gifts that God has given us. And, you know, writing songs for some of us, as I said, is it's part of our passion. It's it's part of the, our purpose. Uh, but it's also, you know, it's also a craft. And as a craft, we have to work on it. We have to develop it. We have to practice it. So in this series, we are talking about just that, how to develop and hone your songwriting skills. We're talking about things like melody and harmony. We're talking about song structure, verses, choruses, bridges, <laughs> all that things, and where to put those and if to put those. And we're talking about uh, we're talking about style and genre, style of music, and also we'll have a segment on writing lyrics as well. And all of this, friends, is with the purpose of using our gifts for God's glory. And also to bring people, including ourselves, closer to him. Right. And so as you can tell from the intro that Paul just gave, songwriting is a pretty vast topic. Yeah. Um, obviously, we can't cover it you know, in any exhaustive or comprehensive means, but we're going to go over the basics um, of songwriting. And in this episode, this is video two, we're talking about melody and harmony. So if you guys didn't see the first video that was on song structure, make sure you go back and check that one out. Um, but again, we're going to go over the basics of melody and harmony and um, talk about some things that maybe you guys haven't thought about before, or maybe you have, but we're hoping just to give you some fresh ideas, fresh perspectives, new ways to think about things to help you in your songwriting craft. Um, as Paul said, this is a craft. It's something you're going to be working on and improving your whole life. You can always get better. Um, there's always new ideas or fresh yeah. ways to think about things. Yeah. So let's jump into talking about melody here. Yeah. Um, what is it? It's always good to start with a definition. So let's look at what Merriam-Webster says that melody is. So they say, quote, a sweet or agreeable succession or arrangement of sounds. Hmm. So I think <laughs> right off the bat, a, a chainsaw probably <laughs> is not in that category, I'm thinking. no. That's uh, a succession of sounds. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's technically correct, but it doesn't really tell you much about yeah. what melody is yeah. from a musical standpoint, from, in my opinion. <laughs> but to me, melody is the most memorable um, part of the song. It's the thing that you keep singing or humming after you've heard it. Um, that also gives a little bit of indication about yeah. what we call the hook. Um, if you guys are familiar with successful songwriting, there's always a hook to it. Um, it's usually in the melody. It can be in other parts of the song. But the hook is the part that's easy to pick up, but it's difficult or impossible to forget. Um, <laughs> it's also known as the earworm, which I think is a great um, term for that because it gets stuck in your head and you can't get it out. Yeah. Now, this is really great when it's a song or a melody that you want to remember, <laughs> but it's the worst thing in the world when you don't want to keep think, singing the song. So think about like baby shark, do, 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 do. Like you don't want that stuck in your head. Wheels on the bus go, go around. around. Yeah. <laughs> so these are what, all these kids' songs. <laughs> Sorry. We'll so edit that out. Those, no, we won't. those are melodies. So those are the hooks of the melodies that um, you get stuck in your head and you yeah. can't stop singing. To me, that's the melody of the song. Yeah. The other way to think about melody is this is a vehicle for the lyrics of your song. It's, you can be writing instrumental music where there's no lyrics, but if you are writing lyrics, the melody is what is going to carry your lyrics um, to your, your audience or the people who are consuming your music. Um, that, that is the interval, the succession or the intervals of notes that you're going to be singing your lyrics to that is going to convey your message or whatever you want to express through your song, through your melody, to your audience. Yeah, and when we get to lyrics, we'll kind of talk about uh, the matching the lyrics to the melody. Yeah. Uh, something we need to talk about. But you know, melody me uh, melodies can be very simple, or they can be more complex. Mm -hmm. Now, what's a a good example of a little simple melody was be would be maybe any of the nursery rhymes that we all uh, learned when we were we were young, like three blind mice, three <laughs> blind mice. Or happy birthday to you, yeah. you know. Or how about how about jingles? Yes. Oh boy, here There's we go. There's a great example of a hook, very simple, but it gets stuck in your head. Oh my goodness. So do you have any examples? Well, hot pocket. 
<laughs> three notes. One, two, three. Three notes. Yeah. Hot and you, pocket. And you can't forget. <laughs> or a little more. Uh, we had another one. That, oh, and we're, we're going back a few years here. Yeah. But nationwide is on your side. They still use that. Yeah. And it's, again, nationwide is on your Three notes. Uh, so... It, but it's so successful. You yeah. hear that once and you can't, like, you don't you, forget it. Mm -hmm, you don't forget it. The funny it. thing is about that, if you guys don't know, that jingle was actually written by Barry Manilow. Yeah, as well as many other other ones. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Band-Aid, uh, yeah. the early McDonald's commercials, the jingles. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> or how about an example, maybe something more complex. Uh, one, one that I think of is the Hallelujah Chorus. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean... Well, here's a com there's a combination because the Hallelujah Chorus, I mean, those, again, da, 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 three notes, Hallelujah, mm. Hallelujah. Very simple. That That's kind of the hook, right, of, right. of that. But my goodness. But that's one part of it. That's huge, just one part of a huge, uh, huge musical composition. Yeah, right? when I think of more complex um, melodies, I think of, like you, you were saying, the Hallelujah uh, choral arrangements, mm -hmm. also like a vocal aria for an opera. Um, something yeah. that has a lot of notes, very complex intervals, jumps between you know low and high. Um, definitely not a jingle for, um, well, you know, <laughs> insurance <not>. or <laughs> Probably a not. restaurant. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> restaurant jingles. Uh, can very you think? Right. Can you think of any restaurant jingles? Yeah, that's that's your homework. I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Red Robin. Oh, there's, see, they all use that same <laughs> interval. That's interesting. They do, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about simple versus complex. Another way to look yeah. at uh, melody is rhythmic versus melodic. Mm. So a rhythmic use of melody would be rap or hip-hop. Again, you're using the melody of your song to convey um, or as a vehicle for your lyrics. You see this definitely in rap or hip-hop. They are delivering their lyrics right. in a rhythmic way um, with um, syncopation, and, you know, very, um, I can't think of another way to say it, just yeah. rhythm and syncopated. Right. Um, versus something that's more melodic or lyrical, where we would be, we would say maybe like sing song type way. That's more your music that you would hear in um, pop. Pop can be rhythmic, but not quite as much as rap or hip hop. Um, rock music, definitely folk music, um, singer songwriter type thing, like the, what you would typically think of um, someone, you know, with a guitar or a piano singing on the radio or right. just performing on YouTube or something like that. Right. This tends to be more lyrical or melodic versus rhythmic. Um, and and yeah. rhythmic rap, for example, rap or pop, often will lean toward the simpler melodies. Not not a lot of note, not a, no, it's not a lot of vocal range. Yeah. You'll, you'll notice they they tend to uh, hold to a it's narrow. It's more it's more about the rhythm than it is about the melody. It's, exactly, it's more monotone. Yeah. very small intervals, not a lot of range right. in the the melody. Right. Um, right. But that's that's more about delivering the rhythm of it than it is the the tune or the tone of the song. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, one thing to think about, uh, and, and as Paul said, when we get into the video on genre, we'll talk more about how to use these different types of melodies effectively towards your song, depending on the style that you're writing. But when you are writing a melody for your song, think, I think the biggest um, the break between our way to think about how to write the melody is, is this a performance song? Is this just about you performing as an artist? Mm -hmm. Or are you writing this more for participation? And the, the easiest way or the biggest way I can think of that is um, worship music. Mm -hmm. If you are a worship artist or you're writing songs for a group of people to be singing together, you have to be really, really careful about the melody. If the melody is too difficult to pick up, people can't sing along unless they know the song really well. Right. Um, you want it to be a simple song that they can pick up by the second verse and be singing along with you. And along, when you, along with that is thinking about the key and the vocal range. Uh, most people can only sing in a limited range. Uh, I remember years ago, Paul Balash said, said from C to shining C, and I thought that was great. <laughs> so that's the C, um, middle C below the staff to the C in the middle of the staff. That's the general person's vocal range. You can go above or below that a note or two if you go up and just pop right back down, but you don't want to hang around there. So again, thinking about your melody, um, if it's just you performing, that's great. You can, you can write the most complex melody and just have fun with it. Do all kinds of vocal flares and pop flares and mm. stuff in it, and it sounds amazing. If you do want to write something that people will be singing along with you, um, 
keep it a little more simple. Think about vocal range, you know, the general vocal range and the key that people can sing in. And that's just one key, I think, it, that yeah. you want to think about as you're con um, composing your own melodies. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And we'll yeah. talk more about that in uh, another another segment. Yeah. Um, harmonies. Yeah, so let's go with let's the, the harmonies. Let's yeah. go with the definition of harmony. Oh, you so have, again, you have a definition. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Merriam-Webster says that harmony is the combination of simultaneous musical notes in a chord. Now that's a little more clear. Mm -hmm. So if you guys think about a chord, whether you play a chord on a piano or on a guitar, um, it's usually one, three, five intervals. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's vocally creating a chord. If, yeah. if you're singing by yourself, you're just singing um, one, um, one note. If you add a note above or below that melody, you, you get harmony. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about when to use harmony. Do you use it not, not at all, sometimes, or all the time? Yeah, yeah. In fact, let's give some examples. Now, we're, again, we're going back a few years, or we got uh, something more recent. Uh, I had a couple examples here. Uh, for those of us who remember the Beach Boys, for example, <laughs> all right, uh, groups, groups of the 60s. We, well, I mean, we can go way back to barbershop quartets, which still exist today. Always, always, always. four-part harmony. Yeah. All right, you would not. There might. Uh, it wouldn't be barbershop quartet without exactly. four-part harmony. Exactly. And by the same token, a lot of gospel music, hymns, for example, uh, southern gospel, if you will, mm -hmm. always uh, written in four-part: S A T B, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Uh, and if they're performed chorally, there's always those four parts. Uh, pop music going way back to, again the Beach Boys uh, groups like the Beatles, Beatles yeah. uh, the Association for example oh my what, what wonderful harmonies <laughs> maybe you remember songs like Cher uh, Cherish and Windy uh, songs like that uh, Beach Boys In My Room California Girls things like that um, and then you know coming up and uh, forgive me but in sync for example <laughs> the backstreet boys i mean that, any any boy band any yeah. boy band yeah <laughs> even bts from from korea you got the sure. k-pop bands sure. yeah sure. always written in it harmony was it it was that was the way to do it um so why why do that why did they yeah. do that well it was just their style it was just their style. Then you had other songs. Again, let's go back to, uh, I think it was 1939, I believe, when uh, The Wizard of Oz had that, that wonderful song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And, and we yeah. heard Judy Garland sing that. By herself, by, no harmony. By herself. Right. And I think most most people that have, have re-recorded uh, re that song have probably done it as, as a solo. Mm -hmm. uh, we could talk about... Um, Many, many gospel songs now, contemporary gospel songs. Uh, for example, Laura Story wrote the song Blessings, and yeah. she sang that by herself. I don't believe there's any harmonies in that. Right. that that's more of a, uh, well, if you will, a story song, yeah. but as, as opposed to a worship song where to, to, there's, you know, harmony just isn't, uh, just wasn't put in and is, uh, I mean, you could, but it's it was written for that uh, without it. Yeah, it really goes back to styles, which we'll yeah. talk more about in another mm -hmm. video. But um, like you said, barbershop quartet, it's always four-part harmony. That is that style. So it comes down to what style of music are you writing? Yeah. Um, what's your target audience? What are you trying to convey? What message behind this? And that will dictate whether you use harmony sometimes or not at all. Um, but why, why do we use harmony? Um, I think for harmony, to me, it's about vocal dynamics. It adds color and emotion yeah. and emphasis. Um, you can be singing a single melody, but then if you add harmony above or below, right. it, mm -hmm. it adds an, um, an emotion yeah, sonically sure to your ears. And so you can use that as a tool to really color your song or to emphasize a certain lyric um, that you want to really bring across to your audience. Um, you know, when you're writing, if you're writing from your feelings, you know, there's a message behind your words, sometimes you want to emphasize that musically, so you'll add yeah. harmony. Um, you can overuse harmony, harmony certainly. That can yeah. ruin a song. It doesn't always need harmony. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is another tool in your toolbox as a songwriter. Um, I would say just listen to some, some of the great music out there. We've mentioned some of the songs. Um, there's certainly new ones coming out all the time. 
really tear them apart, like reverse yeah. engineer these songs, listen to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Why is there harmony at this part and not a, not an, another part? Yeah. Sometimes it's just a personal preference. Sometimes they probably aren't even thinking about it when they do it. But when you hear a really well-crafted song and you, you really look at what they're doing, you can, st you can start saying, oh, I see yeah. exactly what they did there. Right. They added harmony at this exact spot, and yep. it really elevated this part of the song. I, I like that, what you said, about, and a style, too. You'll, you'll find certain styles. Well, it's, it's uh, a solo on the verse and then maybe one harmony on the chorus. Yeah. Go back to solo on the verse. Second chorus, maybe, again, add that one harmony. And then maybe if there's a bridge... Well, maybe now there's two harmony parts, for mm -hmm. example. It, ju it just uses it to build the song. And you may find that you, the style of song that you're writing almost dictates where harmonies should be or, or not be. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah pop a popular thing to do, like if you have like an alto part, is maybe first verse you'd sing below the melody and then the second verse you go above the melody. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. just to change it up. It's right. another way to, to change an otherwise maybe uninteresting melody line. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the the songs that you were talking about before that, um, that are known for their harmony, if you, if you remove the harmony yeah. and just listen to the melody, it would be a really boring song. <laughs> so some yeah. songs act, absolutely need harmony right. and then right. other ones stand alone. I mean, like you yeah. said, over the rainbow, somewhere over the rainbow, you don't need any harmony, and that's an amazing yeah. song. Um, yeah. yeah, songs like that actually are are made emotional and emotions added by the instruments that are used yeah. and the arrangement. But that's that's a whole other podcast anyway. Yeah. But uh, and then just I'll just quickly want to say groups like duos like Simon and Garfunkel, uh, um, um, the Everly yeah, Brothers, Everly Brothers, Righteous thank you. Brothers, yeah, yeah. They, they, and two guys always or two people always singing, almost almost always singing in harmony. So, all the sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, it really the, is. The interesting thing about harmony is um, it, not that other cultures don't have harmony in their music, but if you look back at um, traditional or classical music from different cultures. For some reason, the music of the West is um, mm. characterized by harmony. Mm. Um, if yeah, if you look at cultural music way back in, in different cultures and traditions, and they most traditions or most cultures focus on the melody line, and their instruments mm. are you know they play one note at a time. Yeah. It's when you move towards the West, and you know you think of like the great symphonic and orchestral music that came out of the Western cultures. It is defined by harmony, mm. and for some reason that has been a characteristic of our our music and now that has spread to the world and you yeah. have all cultures using it. It's just a, a different yeah. way of looking at yeah. um, music with stacked notes on top of each other. Yeah. 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 So again, these are just some um, basic ideas. Uh, maybe you guys have already thought about these things or maybe some of them have been new to you. We hope that they were just some food for thought, maybe to spark some ideas for creativity um, things to um, start implementing into your music or to dive deeper into some of these subjects yeah. to to continually hone your craft like we talked about songwriting as craft um, you have to continually it's like a muscle you got to continually um, use it to strengthen it and um, to improve but um, these are just some ideas we want to throw out at you guys to yeah. start thinking about for harmony and melody right we want you to we want, we want you to do two things. We want you to uh, stay in your box, for one thing. Stay in your box, but get better at mm -hmm. what is in there. But we also want you to get out of that box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, it comes, when it comes to harmonies and, and, your, and, your, and so, songwriting overall. So as Nate said, uh, these are just some of the things to think about. There is so much to songwriting, and specifically uh, in this in this uh, segment, uh, melody and harmony and things that we can do. Uh, we hope this covered some of your questions, but if you have more, please do. Don't, uh, don't hesitate to let us know, because if we can help you at all, we would love to do that. And in upcoming segments, we will still we still have a couple things to talk about, and one of course is lyrics. We're going to talk about matching lyrics to the to the style and and to the melody and things like that. We mm -hmm. want to uh, work those in together, and also we'll be talking about style and genre. We want to cover some of those things and how those kind of all work together. So until then, 
please do take care of yourselves. And take care of each other. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye.